So, dear comrades, uh, trade union activists, sisters and brothers, dear friends, so um, I hope so that I don't spoil your schedule, timetable. I know very well from my experiences from the trade union movement and the conferences that we all have so much to tell that always the time is too short. But I'm very honored and happy that I can be here with you once again in South Africa and have this opportunity to address your Congress. As some of you might know, I have been a lawyer with the Central Organization of the Finnish Trade Unions for almost 10 years before I started my political career, so I feel also very much to be at home. So the political labor movement and trade unions, they are like uh, sisters. In most parts of the world, they were born around at the same time from the same roots. They share the same values and they were closer together, but they have their independent lives. Their birth and consequent efforts to fight for justice and equality has been a struggle. And I think I can say that we have been pretty successful, but of course, even we have still a lot to do. Some old challenges persist and progress is uneven across countries and regions. Today's globalized world has also brought new challenges. Inequality is on the rise. Urbanization, unemployment, gender disparities, climate change and environmental degradation. Just to name a few issues shake the foundations of our societies and hinder sustainable development. Dear friends, the past few years have been economically and politically difficult in many ways. The structural changes in work life, employment, livelihoods and business have evolved fast. Working life is getting more split than ever. Poor working conditions race to the bottom zero contracts, the increase in income, income gaps, and uh, the uneven distribution of the fruits of the growth more generally affect the welfare of our societies everywhere. As the companies and uh, supply chains are more global than ever, so must the political labor movement and the trade unions be more global and vocal and effective. So, Crisis awareness, new solutions and action is needed. However, too often the, uh, the answers offered would scale back the prog progress that the labor movement has already achieved. Increased flexibility, improving competitiveness and structural reforms have been used as an excuses and justification. There are new political forces that uh, form governments that try to restrict union movement. For ordinary people and workers, these policies mean lower wages, inferior benefits, unhealthy competition between employees, and the burden of carrying entrepreneurial risks. So uh, let me remind you one worrying recent example from the ILO. The employer representatives in 2012 suddenly questioned the long-established and agreed right to strike. This is a very regressive development and hurts workers, particularly in developing countries where the national legislation often does not guarantee the right to strike. Change is natural and needed, but the correct answer is definitely not by worsening the conditions of employment or scaling back on progress. On the contrary, as we are in the process of formulating the new sustainable development agenda for the future. Also, the ILO core labor conventions need to be increasingly respected and ratified worldwide. They have been adopted in a tripartite manner, and importantly, their application is also being supervised by ILO supervisory mechanisms, which is unique in the whole world. As you know, 
sorry to say, but it is not self-evident that trade union rights and core labor standards are implemented and respected. The rights and standards are crucially important, including the self-evident freedom of association with the right to strike and right to negotiate collectively. Political parties that are interested in protecting workers' rights should join trade unions in the important issue, and the fight has to continue and win. So, sisters and brothers, some claim that the labor movement is a thing of the past. Yes, in a way, but it is also the thing of the present and the future. I want to highlight some of the issues on the Sustainable Development Agenda by UN, which are in the core of the aspirations and work. It is also clear that our involvement and contribution to the agenda and its eventual implementation is highly relevant and needed. Sustainable development is for us, it's not for somebody else who is just interested. I tend to see the sustainable development in a way like a modern trinity. It is an integrated entity. Economic growth is welcomed and needed, but it has to respect the planetary boundaries. The social aspect is equally important because if we do not build more equal and fair societies, the future will not be economically or environmentally sustainable, nor will our societies be just. Thanks to scientists, we are nowadays very aware of the situation and the consequences of human actions. We have already seen terrible changes with the climate, and notice that our planet's many important natural resources are being overused. Ecological diversity is diminishing. We know how political unrest develops in unequal societies. And we have statistics to show that inequality is also bad economics. It is evident that sustainable development needs to be achieved in all human activities and across all the dimensions of development, the environmental, economic, and social. This is what I call the modern trinity. So, why to speak it just now? The international community has a real window of opportunity now as it plans and decides on the post-2015 agenda in United Nations next year. It is a difficult task given the many and multifaceted development challenges the world faces. With multi multiply issues on the table at once, there is sometimes a sense of uttering competing priorities. But um, in fact, tackling interrelated challenges holistically is precisely what we need to do to make the meaningful process. The global community has the opportunity to do things differently and better when the new development agenda is defined. So dear friends, people-centered sustainable economies need empowered people. Democratic governance, accountability, rule of law, and the full respect for human rights are some of the key prerequisites for empowering people to make sustainable choices. Sustainable economies need people-centered growth. It maximizes the use of human potential and resources by enabling all women and men to participate in economic life, to contribute it through the decent work, and to benefit from it through a living wage, reliable social protection, and essential services. Reduction of inequalities must become the central objective of everything we do. Our economic and social policies need to be inclusive. They need to promote the equal and meaningful participation of all. This is fair just to the individual, and it's a smart investment by the society. Securing everyone's access to social protection is probably the most effective strategy a government can take to reduce inequalities. 
by reducing inequalities, we are going to succeed also in reducing poverty, but not the other way around. Education, not only primary, but also secondary and vocational, these are necessary for ensuring that everybody can contribute to addressing today's challenges and seize opportunities. I always say to young people that uh, they probably, they think that their parents and grandparents' education really is out of date. I myself a grand grandmother. But at the same, I always tell to them that be aware your own education will be old-fashioned much, much faster. That's why everybody should be prepared to enjoy lifelong learning. I don't say lifelong education, I say lifelong learning. The underutilized potential, especially women and youth, needs to put in service. Creating employment opportunities, decent and green jobs for all would considerably help to drive sustainable growth. But we all know that not all jobs are green and not all green jobs are decent. So, a few words about women. So, um, we all know that women are confronted with numerous obstacles that limit their capacity as citizens, producers, and leaders. In economy, unleashing women's capacity, uh, talent, and in a, innovation has the potential to yield great benefits. We know it from experience. Studies show that closing the gap between male and female employment rates would boost GDP by 9 to 16 percent in OECD countries only. And if um, I do not believe that uh, the GDP is not, not the, the only goal or the key, but I think we all agree it has some importance. So um, many of us, I think, we remember that uh, there is now 20 years from the Cairo uh, summit, the conference concerning population and development. Next year it will be 20 years from the Beijing Women's Conference. And uh, so, um, what has happened? So, I heard that the Women's Conference held here last weekend was a real suc success. Uh, and it's really needed because uh, gender discrimination is a vice that we cannot accept or afford. I have worked specially since Rio Plus 20 with something which is very important for men and women, and this is a high-level task force for ICPD. So it has been a question of sexual and reproductive health and rights. Somebody can say that it's not so important, so let's do it a little bit later on. But then I will say to you, that we really need it also in the sustainable development um, agenda. Because if the people cannot decide for themselves on their most intimate matters, their most intimate uh, human rights, uh, by whom and when to marry or how many children to have, or what's one's sexuality, sexual identity, how we can expect that these the same people can care and feel responsible for their communities and environment if they cannot do it for their own private life. So, <laughs> thanks for you, thanks for the Women's Conference. So, just a very, very brief memory from the Millennium Development Goals. I happen to have an honor uh, to be co-chairing the Millennium Summit in 2000, together with the president of Namibia at that time, Mr. Bohamba. And what I remember that summit was the feeling, the atmosphere that all those who were there, they had. They wanted to make the new millennium the better than the past one. So we know already that this millennium has not been quite rosy. But uh, we have not failed totally. I think that the Millennium Goals have helped us progress much more than we could do without them. Now our experience can help us in drafting the Sustainable Development Goals with decent work and all that what we know that is important. We can learn from our mistakes and we can make the Sustainable Development Goals stronger and better and reflect what is really required. 
uh, required today. So sisters and brothers, we always say that we need a vision and leadership in our work for better working conditions and more just and equal sustainable work. True, but the vision and leadership is not just a top-down process. They are needed at all levels in political movements, trade unions, civil societies, and business life. People need to be encouraged and educated to, to get involved. Sustainable development with labor rights and decent work being its vital components is fundamentally about people's opportunities to influence their own life and future, claim their rights, and voice their concerns. The labor movement has been looking for the strength from organizing, as we have heard here. Fundamentally, organizing is about increasing democracy at workplaces and business, but it's also about increasing the democratic power of workers more broadly in society. Organizing is based on the idea of decentralized action to bring the democracy closer to every one of us. That union members are the driving force in advancing their own concerns. It's about learning, insight, and doing, but we are responsible also broader in society. And what I really want to say finally is that we need youth, and the youth need us. We will not be always with them, so let's train them now and give them an opportunity and chance and place now. Let's work together different parts of the labor movement, different generations, because together we are strong. I thank you all for the wonderful atmosphere at the conference. I feel myself young again. And uh, I thank um, all of you and I thank all of you and also your leadership. And um, I'm sure we will meet each other in the fight for the better sustainable future. Thank you.